mean, so much has happened in such a short time for Ian yeah. and for your family and the ups, the downs, the in betweens, <laughs> the forward and back, and Evie's just so resilient. And yeah. I think you've explained yeah. really, really well. When you got the call, what I mean, what went through your head? So tell us about where you were. I'm sure you'll never ever forget no. where you were, what time it was. We Gareth and I, um, we took shifts with Evie, so yeah. we would have done like three days on, three days off. Yes. <laughs> It's like a shot, but that's what we did. That's your routine. Yeah, yeah, to be our girl, you know, to be the girls, so we would have done three days with Amy and our three days at home with the girls and switch just so the girls can have a bit of routine and, yeah. and we get a bit of time at home. But Gareth was sick that week, I remember he was sick and I was up the whole time. I was up for like six days straight. Yeah. And we always went to the hospice on a Thursday. Mm. Um, we took the girls out of school and that was our day to go to the hospice and spend with the family. And we went to the hospice that day and Gareth and I switched. Yeah. So he went back to the hospital with Evie and I went home. So I hadn't been home all week. And yeah, so he went back and it was that night. And we did usually speak. And Evie was sick. Evie was sick leading up to that. She was really pearly. Um, and I went to bed and then Gareth phoned me at like five in the morning. But when he phoned me, he was crying. And mm-hmm. I was like... This is this is bad. Yeah. This is you know the way he was. Uh, he was that emotional. I thought something happened, mm-hmm. and then he just I, I couldn't hear him through his words, and he was like, "We got the call, like we got the call," and it's like I couldn't, I couldn't. Yeah, there's no words, absolutely yeah. no words. But I went into complete work mode. Yeah. You know, it was like, and I promised we didn't have a bag packed. We never, we never packed a bag. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I packed 13 t-shirts for gas, no underwear for me, it was just the most randomest cute pack case. Yeah. I had to phone my mum to come because the guards were in bed. Um, yeah, she was an emotional wreck too. It was just, it was really, it was really surreal, yeah. you know, and I don't think for me, and even till after the transplant, like there was, there was no real like, not enjoyment, but it was very much, there's still a lot to do, yeah. you know. Um, it's the start. Yeah. Rather than, oh, that's behind us now. Yeah, yeah, it was very much like, this is a new, this is something new, you know. Um, so I drove down the road, thank God it was half five in the morning because, <laughs> yeah. Like in Spain. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and I was so surreal, it was really surreal. And I just remember when I parked the car and, um, I was walking in through the main entrance and one of the nurses, um, she had to get paperwork or something. And I just remember it's from the ICU, you know, the look down over the yeah. foyer. And she was just like, her arms, she was just jumping, you know, to see me. And it was just, yeah, that, I think that was such a special moment, you know, whenever I walked in. Um, but I was very much right to go mode, you know, yeah. it was like, right, we have a job to do here. Mm-hmm. Gareth was just, crying he was just <laughs> hugging people he was just I was like why have you not been packed you yeah. like literally everything was everywhere there was nothing done and I just got into like I can't cope with this I was like hey, we need we need to go um yeah it was very surreal it was and it was a lovely moment for the nurses do you know yeah. like they you know for them to get that call too do you oh, know cool. for them you know like they grew up like they need like looked after you looked after us mm-hmm. do you know so for them to get that as well it was just pretty special yeah um so we eventually got packed and Gareth packed <laughs> and, and it's not yeah, at this point <laughs> yes I think so um but again very surreal yeah you know and there was like a sense of urgency and sense of you know we got the call or Gareth got the call at five and like we were on the runway by half seven yeah do you know so it was very it was very quick do you know yeah. and Evie was whatever happened to her she was in amazing form so for so like and that was another thing was worried you know would she be fit to travel to transplant like you know she was so sick prior to this mm. um but she was just in mm. a daze you know she was waving by leaving park clinic and you know it was so surreal that's the only word i can answer it was just surreal yeah do you know um and then we got to the freemans and then it was just a stop yeah it was just um there was so much and I don't think I don't think that for part of us either like it was a really it was a really long process mm-hmm. and it was like and there was at home people were getting the word and they were like you know 
I think Mar- Marin went into school, told her principal, and she was proud for it. Mass the whole, you know, oh, the town yeah. and people knew us, but it it didn't. It still, and it was so hard. Like Evie got an offer, but it wasn't. We didn't know whether it was going to be a ma- complete match for her. There yeah. was there was a lot of things at that side that it just wasn't straightforward, you know. Mm. So that was tough. So it was like this lead up to that this is happening today and will it happen mm-hmm. do you know so that was hard and it must have been so difficult then managing other people's expectations of that as well because I know you and I have spoken before about people assuming oh it's grand mm-hmm. they got the call there's a heart there yeah. it'll just be popped in and then, <laughs> and then <that's laughs> everything's fine, fine do, you know? do you know and you know that is no. not the case at all no so how did you manage kind of when you got there because even I would have thought as well, it's go, 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 yeah. go, go, just into theatre, into surgery. Yeah. Do you know, get the surgery underway and take it from there. I am sure you had everybody and their dog text them, yeah. phoning. They did. All while you're trying to manage. And it was, and it was again, and it was lovely. And yeah. It was, and it was really nice and it was like, but it was like, it was, it was like a distraction. You know, it yeah. was almost like. I don't want to say false hope, but it was like for them, they were celebrating this. But in reality, you know, we didn't know for definite this was going to be. There was so there's so much, and like with Evie and their donor, like there was mismatch of things on things, and there were certain things needed done, and and then there was other there was multiple donations, you know, um, and that was hard. And then that reality of, you know, Evie's donor, another donations you know and then like whenever that side and then that hits you know and then we were like you know did they change their mind and they're okay to change their mind you know but it was like we didn't know what was going to happen and it wasn't until so we were in the Freemans for early morning but he didn't go to theatre until half eleven yeah. that night yeah do you know so um it was a long process and it wasn't we didn't get told officially till 11 p.m that all systems go, we're going to yeah. theatre, do you know, and then by 11.45 she went into theatre, do you know, so it wasn't until 11 o'clock that night mm-hmm. that we were told, yes, this is, this is go now, yeah. do you know, we, we were prepped, you know, we, we had to be surgically washed, you know, fasting, but at any moment it could have been different. Yeah, of course. So, again, that was tough, and like we've seen maybe go to theatre so many times, like I've lost count between, do you know, Paths and mm-hmm. surgeries and you know Pepin lines and the leaving her to transplant was different. It yes. was it was different. And how did that? How did that feel? I mean, I imagine it was just the worst pain imaginable. And you're dealing with, gosh, you know, lots of hope that the surgery is going to go as yeah. planned and go well. But then it must just be. She must have been terrified. They asked us, you know. Did we want to go ahead with this? And then we remember we were speaking to our surgeon. It was like, there's no other option, do you know. And Evie was at a stage where she she needed that, do you know. Of course. So it was hard. You know, previous surgery were like so hard. You know, we're open heart surgeries were. Don't get me wrong, they were so hard. But that was something that was going to benefit her, do you know. Yeah. And it was, you know, this, you know, some of them were planned, but this was this was hard. You know, it kind of felt like completely out of control mm-hmm. um, so we took her in they let us go up and we went to just before they took her on in and and it was really it was really weird it was really surreal it was like a mix of like happy a mm-hmm. mix of do you know will she you know because she was in late stage heart failure do you know like will she survive this yeah. um, and I remember she, I was holding her and she just cupped her hands and me like this And I said to Gareth, it's like she's remembered me. She's taken in your face. Yeah, so that was hard. Mm -hmm. But it needed to happen. And then, yeah, it was a good fear. And we actually did sleep. We actually went home. I think no one previously with surgeries, you know, like Amy needed us a lot to the other side. So it was so surreal. We went back to Scott House, the accommodation of the Freeman. We ordered a pizza <laughs> and we did, we slept for a few hours and then we got to see her, we got to see her at 7 o'clock the next morning. Yeah. 
And that was surreal. I think it was only that, at that point. It was like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. You didn't realise you were holding your breath that entire time. And do you think at that point that's when you believed? Even though it had already happened, was that your first moment of, okay, now um, the next bit? Yeah. Begins? It's funny because Gareth and I both spoke about it. For him, it was a massive, you know, whenever we seen, with Evie when having half an hour, yeah. to now go and to see him for pumping chambers yeah. was, um, that was a moment we'll forget. Mm-hmm. But for me, I think I didn't properly, until we were flying home, that's whenever I was more settled with it. Yeah. But at that moment, when we seen the four chambers, that was, that was like a wow. It yeah. was just wow. That was a pivotal moment. That's a pivotal moment. And in true Evie style, you, she pulled out a Christmas miracle. She did. <laughs> um, and it's again, like, for being in hospital for so long, yeah. to only be in eight weeks at mm-hmm. home. And at that stage, we were she was 16 months old. We were only eight weeks at home. We flew home the day before Christmas Eve. Yeah. So she recovered. Again, so many things popped up and so many different complications. But... Yeah. She coped well enough with them. Mm-hmm. Um, we got home on Christmas Day for Christmas Eve. Brilliant. And it must have just been so special to have your whole family yeah. then back together. And as you say, that that point there of the week, you can exhale. Yeah. And you can, I mean, start to process. I'm sure you still haven't processed no. because every day is, is different. And again, we spoke before about the misconception almost is that right heart transplant yeah she's all she's fixed it's fine no but in reality it's it's very different yeah. tell us about kind of Evie's life now post transplant yeah. I think the best way I can explain it is that Evie had one heart condition and now we've just swapped to yeah. a different one that's the best way I could explain it um yeah. don't get me wrong you know we are definitely different place um like Evie is home, do you know, she's um, she's in school, do you know, but we have, like, she's on medication the rest of her life, you know, she's she's still um, too fed, she's still not eating, but, you know, she is making her own, she's making her own steps and she, she's just, she's just amazing, she is just amazing and, yeah, battles, medical battles are still really, really tough, you know, we're still in a lot of appointments, but the fact that Evie can walk home from them and leave them is just amazing. Do you know, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's indescribable. It's still really surreal. It's still yeah. really, really surreal. Um, and like we are, like we're back over to the Freemans next month and like she's very much looked at all the time. You know, yeah. we're still appointments, which is great. You know, yeah. there's always that fear of rejection. There's, there's always that fear of, um, with her weight and with other, and with transplant comes a different side of, um, complications. Yeah. But the team have been great mm-hmm. and the Belfast team have been great. So, um, yeah, she's just, she's just amazing. She's yeah. just absolutely amazing. And as you say, you know, take every day as it comes and it's yeah. very much easy led. Very much easy led. <laughs> and just getting to the point where she's pulling the heart card to oh! things. She's, she, yeah, she is. She is exactly. She is something else. Yeah. So, do you know, she's, yeah, she's, she's amazing. You know, she's, Love skill, you know, she's at dancing now, she's at football, she thinks she is professional, she thinks yeah. she is, she is, her spirit is just, if you could bottle it, it is yeah. just, and I do think her resilience has really shown through, you know, like growing up in hospital, like growing up with nurses and doctors, you know, she is, she's so social, you know, mm. whereas I find Evie's journey has really impacted the other girls and, you know, impacted the rest of us. Whereas Evie is just, yeah, it's she's on. like, she can't wait to go on the plane, to go to England. She can't, you know, she thinks every time she gets her bloods, Rebecca's giving her a present. You know, <laughs> she's just, her perspective is just, it's just amazing. It, yeah. really, it really, really is, yeah. you know. And I think you have to give yourselves a lot of credit for that too, because yeah. no matter what, I mean, from visiting you all those times in hospital, it was always, you always went above and beyond, you, Gareth, your family, the girls when they got up, always went above and beyond to make today a good day. Yeah. And yeah, and I think that was the one thing we always, yeah, we wanted the quality of life for you. And I yeah. think, I think definitely the team 
in Belfast have really they prepared us for that you know like this could go not in a negative way but just for us knowledge was part of us you know so the more we knew the more we understood you know the straight talk and it was like we you know from onset you know Dr Sands has been great with us you know Mm -hmm. that's the way we wanted it so again it was very much we expect the worst but we just hope for the best Mm -hmm. and it did prepare and it did change our perspective with AV you know we did want that quality time with her, mm-hmm. you know, we really did and and I think if you know, if the worst case did happen, we wouldn't have any regrets. Do you know, I think we did we did our pride and we did the girls pride and I think we did us pride, you know, and I'm just so happy that Evie is now at the stage, you know. And she does ask about it, you know, and just getting this stage. we were at the transplant games mm-hmm. and um Evie does ask about her donor, do you know, yeah. she's at that stage where She's asking about them and, you know, we're with psychology, we're, you know, we're talking through that with her. But she's so proud of it, mm-hmm. do you know, mm-hmm. she really is. And I just hope she always is. And, yeah. do you know, I just hope that she'll always remember that. And, like, she does know that someone special saved her. And, do you know, and that's the one thing, you know, that as hard as, you know, as positive our side is, you know, there is that reality that, do you know, Evie's donor, you know, their family have you know, went through so much hardship. Yeah. You know, but without them, you wouldn't be here. Yeah. And you mentioned donors, and we've, we've heard one side of things from you and your experience in receiving the gift of life. Um, unfortunately, we both know plenty yeah. of families, yeah. too many families, where the call didn't come in time. Mm-hmm. And really tragically, they, they didn't yeah. get the, the organ that they so badly needed. Um, and you... I told me about your lovely friend, yeah. Loda, mm-hmm. um, that you invited along today to share her story about yeah. her mum. And unfortunately, she can't be here, but Loda has um, written a really heartfelt letter that I'm going to read out now. Um, just, I just think it's really nice to get both yeah. perspectives. Um, so Loda has shared her story about her experience after her lovely mum, Bernie, passed away um, and their experience with organ donation and making the decision to donate their organs. So I'll just read this out now. For as long as I can remember, Mummy always spoke about telling people that she wanted to be an organ donor. In January 2012, Mummy suffered brain hemorrhage and was transferred to the Royal Victoria Hospital. After a second surgery with complications, Mummy remained ventilated and went to ICU. During this time, she suffered a further bleed. I remember watching the monitors and the numbers getting worse to the point we were all sent sent out and I thought she would be gone. When we were called back in, they had stabilised mummy, but I knew what was happening. So I told the nurse the one thing my mummy wanted to do was donate her organs. We were introduced to the organ donation team the very next morning. They had checked the register to confirm mummy had registered as a donor. Because mummy had been so open about wanting to be an organ donor, it made the situation easier to cope with because we were following her wish. We were allowed to stay with mummy the whole time. I'm sure ICU will never forget us. My mummy was one of 13 and we were all at her bedside. The cubicle beside mummy was empty and we occupied both bed spaces and not once did they say there was too many in. Sarah was our organ donation nurse and I can't put into words how much she supported us and became involved with our family in such tragic circumstances. Sarah followed the whole process and was with Mummy when she went to theatre. Sarah phoned me the next morning to let us know it was all done. We were given handprints and hair cuttings. We got our first letter two weeks later telling us about the people who had received Mummy's gift of life. I am so proud of my Mummy and what she has done for others. I just hope they are showing her the words. And I just think that is so Mm. touching. And it... It's a really important insight, I think, to the family on the other side of that, that that can literally go either way. And I think that Clodagh's story about Bernie really highlights the importance of having the discussion with your family. And I know that Clodagh was probably, from an organ donation point of view, was in a really privileged position because her mummy had made those yeah. wishes abundantly clear 
Um, but equally, you can understand if people are, are in that situation and, and their family member has just died or, or they've got the news that they are dying. If there is that, do you know, if there's that kind of element of doubt, do you know, it is a yes or a no. Yeah, it is. Um, and I think with, we don't know how Evie's done her past. Yeah. Um, do you know that they passed and they were asked a question and Evie is here because of their answer? Yeah. And I think that's, um, yeah, in the most darkest hour, they chose this, like Cluda and their family. And they saved Evie yeah. and multiple other people. And like Bernie and Cluda, like I hope that they know that Evie is, we are so thankful of it, you know, yeah. and I just hope they find comfort in knowing that, you know, their darkest days have helped Evie yeah. and other donors, you know. Um, but yeah, basically Evie is here because of, yes, I uh, guess, one yeah. word, because of one word. Just one word. Yeah. And if you had anything to say, we've got this platform, so if you had something that you could share with maybe families that are sitting, watching or listening to this, that are on the list, maybe even in honour of, of our friends who have passed away, waiting on a donor. And maybe those who have never, it's maybe yeah. just never entered their head. Well, what would you say to them, if whatever their decision may be? I think, um, yeah, organ donation has really changed our lives, not just Evie's, but the girls. You know, it's changed our whole family. And again, something that was never on my radar. But my family, although, and all our families know that organ donation, if it ever came a time, that it, it is yes. Because we now know the impact of what it can do, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it is having the conversations and making your your you know what you want very clear because it is life changing. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely life changing, and um, and I do feel like if more conversations were had, then those people waiting wouldn't have to wait as much. And it is so hard. It's so hard to like talk about it. It's so hard to think about it. But that's the reality. Mm -hmm. The reality is like there isn't enough, mm -hmm. and the more conversations, the more lives will be saved. Kelly, and thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for sharing your story so honestly, and we're just so happy to have been a part of Evie's life. Still oh, are. So she nice. still keeps us busy, <laughs> and we're just so so happy that it's that it's worked out for you. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no. oh.